Hello. Welcome teachers. This is an introduction to the instructional methodology used in the design of ABC Time curriculum and online classes. In this training series, which focuses on methodology, teachers learn about instructional methods for helping English learners develop language skills. This is the second video in the series on methodologies. Here we will examine three, PPP, ESA, and TBL. This video series provides teachers with just a brief overview of each method and examples of how the method is demonstrated in the design of classes, as well as examples of how teachers can apply instructional strategies that support the methodologies. In this second video in the series, we will discuss PPP. This stands for Present, Practice, and Produce. We will also discuss ESA, which stands for Engage, Study, and Activate and TBL, task-based learning, which as suggested in the name means students learn language as they complete smaller or larger tasks. The first video in this series examined CLIL, Content and Language Integrated Learning, and the next video in the series will examine other areas. But first let's look at PPP. One way to understand the value of PPP, present, practice, and produce is to see it as a way of ordering instruction. First, the teacher presents vocabulary, sent sentence structures, or information about topics. Next, the students are given opportunities to engage in guided practice. And third, students engage in activities that allow them to use and produce language and new knowledge. Here's an example of an ABC time lesson for teachers to use to present, help students practice, and provide students with opportunities to produce the language. During presentation, the teacher may introduce vocabulary or sentence structures, as happens in this lesson here. During practice, the students engage in activities that enable them to become more familiar with the new language. The activities may ask them to listen to the instructor say the word or phrase, and then the students identify a picture or match pictures and words, as shown in this practice activity. During production, students produce something. They demonstrate listening, speaking, writing, and reading skills they have obtained after learning and practicing the language. Production may include a variety of activities, such as engaging in conversations with the teacher or other students, creating something like listing ideas, either verbally or in writing, or as shown here, engaging in a role-playing activity. What can teachers do to enhance the value of the present, practice, and produce system of instruction? One resource discussing PPP shows it as a triangle to emphasize change from the teacher speaking the most during presentation, as indicated in the upper part of the triangle, to the teacher offering guidance during practice, but also providing plenty of opportunity for students to engage in speaking, as shown in the middle part of the triangle, to then the students doing most of the talking to produce the language with the teacher only speaking when necessary, as depicted in the lower part of the triangle. This emphasizes one of the goals of PPP, to reduce teacher talk time and increase student talk time. One way to reduce teacher talk time and avoid unnecessary language when giving directions, for example, is to simply demonstrate how to do it. The teacher can reduce and simplify language used while demonstrating how to do something. For example, with this lesson, the teacher could say, find the words, watch TV, click and move the words to the picture. As the teacher is saying this, the teacher can perform the action of moving the words to the pictures to show the students what to do. If there are several steps to an activity, it is often best to break up the instructions into separate steps. The teacher can demonstrate a step, stating it out loud in simple language, ask students to perform the step, and then demonstrate the next step and ask students to perform it. Once students understand all the steps, they can continue with the activity, completing all steps on their own. These are some ways teachers can support the PPP model. Next, we will consider ESA, Engage, Study, and Activate. ESA is similar to PPP in many ways. It is a way of ordering instruction or showing the way instruction will be handled. First, the goal is to engage the students, get them interested. Next, students need to study the topic, learn it, and practice it. 
and third, the students activate their learning by continuing to practice and engage in activities that help them to use and remember the language. Do you see overlapping patterns with PPP? Notice how some presenting may occur during warm-up in the engage phase, and presentation or presenting also occurs during the study phase as the teacher introduces the new language to the students. Practice occurs during the study phase as well, so students can build their skills and abilities, but practice activities also help students to activate learning. Students continue to activate their new knowledge and skills during the produce stage of PPP. Although the two methodologies, PPP and ESA, overlap instructional phases, the underlying emphasis of ESA is to promote student interest and engagement in all phases. ABC Time Curriculum promotes this by providing activities that are designed to be interesting and help students stay focused on learning. Warm-up activities, which may include watching and discussing a video that introduces a topic, or listening to an audio file, discussing an interesting picture, or engaging in some kind of introductory activity, like this one for more advanced students. The complete lesson for this warm-up teaches a science topic on being clean and healthy. Before introducing new vocabulary like bacteria and germs, the teacher does a warm-up activity like this one, and students are asked to match pictures of dirty things or people to the word dirty and pictures of clean things or people to the word clean. To engage students further, the teacher can ask questions to get students' opinions like, do you like being dirty? Or when you get dirty, what do you do to clean up? Teachers can promote the underlying principles of the ESA model by considering ways to keep students' attention and interest. For example, teachers can give students trophies throughout the class to reward good work and effort. At the end of class, teachers can promote students' good work and effort by displaying students' screens on podiums to show how well students did and to assign medals for good participation, speaking, listening, and other performance. Throughout the class, teachers should plan lesson activities to help students stay engaged. For example, while one student is doing something on the class page or the board, other students may be asked to write on paper or perform actions, so all students have something to do while the one completes something on the class page. Students' interest and motivation is also affected by correction methods. It is important to consider ways to correct students in a way that encourages them to keep trying. And one way to do this is to simply repeat something that, that has been said incorrectly. Let the student hear it again and then move on. Finally, while trophies can be used to reward students for correct answers, they can also be used to award students for effort. Awarding students for effort helps them to realize they will not be penalized if they say or do something incorrectly. And often, knowing that encourages them to continue participating without risk. Frequent praise is one of the best ways to keep students motivated. Another common instructional method used in language learning classrooms is TBL, or task-based learning. In essence, TBL teachers give students a task, which students must complete using whatever English they happen to know that will help them complete the task. TBL processes can occur in many ways, but there's a very basic outline of the model here. It typically follows free task activities, such as presenting what the students will do, task activities, so the students can begin to perform the task, and then review and presentation of what the students did. In task-based learning, the teacher might introduce vocabulary or sentence structures the students will likely need to complete the task, but the emphasis in a TBL class is on completing the task, not necessarily on specific vocabulary learning. Here are some examples. The teacher may begin class by explaining to the students that they need to prepare a list of school supplies and a budget showing how much money is needed to obtain the supplies. The teacher may show an example of the final product the students need to present at the end of class and how they will present it. The teacher may also explain the way students will acquire the information they need to complete the task. While the students work on the task, the teacher may check on progress and offer language or other guidance that will help them complete the task. The students will likely use much auxiliary language besides the vocabulary one expects to hear when discussing the topic. 
ABC Time lessons are not designed fully around the TBL model. Instead, ABC Time lessons typically present specific vocabulary and structured practice following the PPP and ESA models, which is especially beneficial for younger learners. However, often during the production stage for older learners, students are presented with tasks that they complete individually or with team members. They use new language they have recently learned and any language they know to help them complete and present the task. Here's an example in a level 9 lesson wherein students are asked to complete the task of creating a personal schedule. However, the teacher introduces a target sentence. I start to do such and such at such and such time and end at such and such. When presenting their schedules, students are expected to use the target sentence. However, teachers can add extension questions onto the discussion about the task and encourage students to produce both the target language and additional language they may know to explain or present more of their own thoughts. This encourages students to engage in more natural back and forth conversation about topics. So notice first the students share the information using the target sentence. And then auxiliary questions are asked, such as, how long do you play basketball? Or what books do you read? Again, this encourages conversation in a natural way. Well, this ends our second video in the series on methodology that is used in the preparation of ABC Time curriculum. Once again, you're encouraged to research the methods discussed. Here are some links that may be useful to you as you do that. Thanks again for your attention. Happy teaching!